occasionally, uh, no matter how hard we try, we still end up with having problems that arrive in the field and you need to know how to troubleshoot your system. One of the most common on a new machine is the fact that the pump itself will not build enough pressure. Uh, when you first start the system up, you need to take your needle valve and close it all the way. When you close it all the way and you turn your system on, I like to see your pressure gauge hit 200 pounds of pressure. Now, if this was a system that had been out in the field for a while and had operated properly, then chances are you have a break in the main line and that's the reason why you're not building pressure. To double check this, if you just take the system and crack it like this where there's nothing passing and watch the pressure gauge and if there's no change in the pressure then it's primarily because the pressure in the pump itself is not set high enough. The best way, the way to fix this is turn the system off. Always make sure that you unplug it. Loosen your pump. Rotate your pump up and take your crescent wrench and you'll find this large nut on the bottom of the system. Do not run the system with this nut while it's off. Take your screwdriver and turn it in. It usually goes up 25 to 50 pounds per half turn. And you might have to do this a couple of times to get the exact pressure the way you want it. The ideal pressure we're looking for on this is 200 pounds of pressure with the petcock closed or the needle valve closed. Plug your system back in. And you have 200 pounds of pressure. This is the amount of pressure that it takes to really make the system work properly. Open up your needle valve. Allow your pressure to drop back. Do you 160, 170? pounds of pressure. What this allows to happen, instead of using the bypass within the pump, you have extended over and you're using the bypass flow for the excess amount of fluid for the pump to go back through the check valve. The reason for doing this is when the system is turned off, the bypass pressure is around 20 pounds of pressure, and when you close it, the needle will fall immediately 20 pounds and will allow your nozzles to turn off immediately. Occasionally while your system's in service, if you have problems with insecticide coming out of the lines, two things that you need to check. The filter needs to be checked and cleaned every time the unit is filled up. Uh, if you have a problem, once the filter is cleaned and it is not picking up insecticide, then you need to check your uh, check valve. You can do that by unscrewing your filter, taking a screwdriver, and pushing the inside of your check valve to make sure that the check valve is opening properly. Once you've done that, and those two things are working properly, uh, the, other th the other thing that might be uh, of a problem here, we have had upon occasions, mice will cut through the line. For some reason, they like to chew on the nylon, and they'll cut through the line. So if your unit is running, and you're picking up pressure, and I mean, and you're picking up fluid out of the tank, 
and you can actually crimp this line and watch your pressure build up. But yet, when you relieve this line, you do not have anything coming out of your nozzles, then chances are you've had a mouse or something has broke the line itself. You need to check for definite leaks within the line. When troubleshooting, if you have trouble with the timer, for example, you set it for a particular time of day uh, and it's not going off properly, the first thing you should check for is to make sure the time is set correctly. This is a clock, and the clock, anytime the electricity is off, then the clock is going to be stopped, and you're going to have to reset it to get the proper time. If you run into a, a situation where the timer itself is inoperative, and you need to change the timer out, we recommend changing just the internal workings of the timer. Make sure your timer is unplugged. Take a screwdriver and pop this little piece of plastic off. I recommend taking a piece of string or a tie and tying each one of these wire ends together so you know exactly where they come off of. Loosen your screws up, slide them out. You have two little, two small bolts that hold the card in. Take those loose. And then the one screw at the top, then slide the timer out. and we recommend changing this part rather than taking the entire box apart. When instructing your customers on the proper usage of the uh, machine, make sure when you explain the hand timer that this is a five minute timer. The, you cannot turn this machine on with this timer longer than five minutes. And we recommend if you're going to use a hand timer to activate the machine, use it for somewhere between a minute to a minute and 15, 20 seconds. When you are ready to use the um, hand timer, make sure you turn past the one and then set your time. This unit will activate the system and run for the length of time that you set and will turn off by itself automatically. You do not have to stay and man the equipment to do it. If you ever have problems or troubleshooting where the motor uh, is not, does not seem to work properly, I recommend two steps. Number One of the things that I've noticed with our equipment, we have never or very rarely had ever have to replace a motor. But upon occasion, um, the pump will lose a seal within the pump and the bearings will become tight and actually give an indication that will almost indicate that the motor is at, is at fault. What I recommend doing in this particular case before you remove any motor is loosen up the V-clamp that holds the pump in place and remove the pump. Once you've removed the pump, you can take your fingertips here and rotate the pump. If this is rotating freely, then the problem is within the motor. If this is rotating hard where you have a problem turning this with your 
fingertips, then the problem was, is within the pump. Change the pump out. And you change the pump just by continuing the way I have here. Take the V-clamp off, unhook your tubings, unhook it from your barn, take your pump loose from here and here, and replace the pump. If it's a motor that is out, then I recommend make sure that your motor is unplugged. In fact, unplug your, every single time that you work on your pump and your unit, unplug it. To uh, change the motor, rather than taking the four bolts off of the bracket, it's much faster to take these screws off and the belts and the bands that go around the end of it. And the motor can be lifted out. The wires are very easily changed. There's no problem about that. You have to um, take your plate off the back. Loosen your ground wire. Put your small flag connectors and your motor is loose. Very easy task. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for letting me come and show you how to install and service the overhead fly spray system. I've hit the highlights and I've tried to hit points that I think would be the major points if you ever ran into problems or had any questions about it. Now that you have your equipment, do not feel like you're left alone. I'm available 24 hours a day. We've got an answering service or the office hours. Office hours, we're in from 8 in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time. Uh, also available for you is an 800 number, 1-800-248-5858. And uh, if you call after or before office hours, you will receive a recording. If you leave your name and your number on the recording, I will get back to you immediately. But the convenience of the 800 number is for you, for if you have any problems with your system, any questions about installing it and reordering of your insecticide. We're there. I thank you very much.